Shamrock Shake does not contain actual shamrocks. Tornado patrols meant going where the weather was, or at least going near where the weather was going to be in order to establish a home base. Back in Equestria, of course, the Pegasi made most of the weather. As a result, it was where they said it was going to be, and what they said it was going to be. On Earth, that wasn't the case, and there were week-by-week -week discussions about the most fertile ground for tornadoes. When the tornado team had set up their first encampment at a Best Western in Texas, they had raided a front-page article in the newspaper, and a couple of days of interviews and editorials in the second section for the week following. Dr. Tetsuya hadn't approved, especially since the interviews focused less on his scientific work and more on the teams that found, measured, and attempted to break up the tornadoes. He'd still done an interview, and so had Bill and Joe. Paradise had spoken for the team, and a few Pegasi had raided separate interviews. Velvet Light had muddled her way through one interview without entirely understanding what was happening. The reporter had caught her in the parking lot of the Dillons while covering the latest iPhone craze at the AT&T store. Her answers to questions hadn't been anything special, but the fact that she was sporting a gauze bandage around a foreleg as a result of windblown debris made her immediately sympathetic, and the plucky underdog to an audience who knew full well the carnage a tornado could bring. As the months went by, their fame and notoriety faded, at least in the eyes of the press. Their arrival at a new hotel was no longer newsworthy. Although, after a severe storm, there was always some video footage of the ponies in action. At first, they were shaky cell phone videos taken by locals, until some of the Pegasi started wearing GoPros. Wrinkly, Arkansas wasn't known for much. It was an unremarkable town, located near where the thought-to-be extinct ivory-billed woodpecker was rediscovered. It was also surrounded by rice fields and popular for duck hunters in the late fall and early winter. Additionally, it was about halfway between Little Rock and Memphis, and often used in some of their advertising campaigns. It was mostly destroyed by an F4 tornado in 1909, and the local Days Inn was, for now, the headquarters of a dozen storm-fighting Pegasi and their human crew, none of whom knew the history of the town. They did know that the Days Inn had a continental breakfast. It wasn't great, though. Most mornings, when they weren't on the road, the ponies and some of their human crew would visit the Waffle House, up to the point that they'd become temporary regulars. The first day, the waitresses had been caught off guard at a dozen Pegasi crowding into booths, but now it had shifted to... Do you want the usual, hun? Los Pinos was next to the hotel, and Pizza Hut was close. They didn't deliver, but Dusty's van could carry plenty of pizza. If that wasn't available, most of the Pegasi were competent enough flyers to carry a couple of boxes on their back, over the interstate, and back to the hotel. Even McDonald's saw the ponies enough that the staff no longer freaked out if a Pegasus came inside or made her way through the drive through lane for some McCafe coffees or a sack of filet of fishes A couple of the more tech-savvy Pegasi had even figured out the McDonald's app. Thus, it was one otherwise ordinary Friday afternoon that a lone Pegasus made her way to the McLobby and trotted up to the counter. A few people in the lobby snapped pictures of her to post on their Facebook, Twitter, Instagrams, and whatever else they were using. But for the most part, the tornado ponies had become a common enough sight around town that nobody really remarked on her presence. When it was her turn at the counter, she got right to the point. One shamrock shake, please. The clerk hesitated over the screen. What size? Mary Mae frowned. Some of the ponies struggled with the idea of things coming in different sizes even after all this time on Earth. They'd figured out what size they wanted for things they usually ordered, but when it was something new, they were often caught off guard. Small, medium, or large. McDonald's had been fancifying its menu to appeal to a more nuanced customer base, but it hadn't gone full Starbucks when it came to sizing. Medium, er, large. Whipped cream? Yes, please. He gave her a total and told her the order number. He gave her the receipt, but he thought it was strange to see them holding the slip of thermal paper in their mouth and occasionally looking at it cross-eyed as the order display updated. He'd learned that the ponies were more attentive than some of their customers. Give them an order number, and they'd remember it. 
One thing that the McDonald's employees and other fast food employees hadn't noticed about the ponies was their constant surprise at how fast the food was ready. While there were thermopalia that sold ready-to-eat foods for ponies on the go, they only had a few options. Any place with a large menu where the food hadn't already been prepared, or nearly prepared, and there was going to be a wait. Mary Mae stepped away from the counter and went around the corner to study the Happy Meal toy display. It was at a low level to appeal to children, which was also convenient for Pegasi. Curiously, there was also a fire extinguisher right next to it, also at a low level. Currently, they were offering Disney-themed toys. Collecting cards and giant posters, the whole team had spent a week at Disney World as part of their winter vacation, and that had been an enjoyable place. Mary Mae didn't quite understand it, but she enjoyed the roller coasters and water rides. Epcot was kind of like a quick tour of the world, and they even had an equestrian area with ponies. The public-facing side of it was adapted to appeal to humans, but it was still nice to meet new friends and chat in Ponish. Her ear perked as her order number was called, faster than she'd expected it to be. It couldn't have been more than a minute. She trotted to the counter and regarded it. Color-wise, it was a complimentary green to her coat, with a swirl of whipped cream on top, just like she asked. It was in a clear plastic cup with a domed top, much like the cups for Slurpees. Mary Mae grabbed the shake off the counter, grabbed a straw out of the bin with her mouth, and then settled into a seat with her frosty treat. Getting proper pony foods was a treat. At first, the wide array of unfamiliar choices and ready availability of Taco Bell were appealing, but she was a simple pony, and sometimes wanted something familiar. Some of the ponies on the team had been motivated to get a free ticket to Earth, and were willing to work extreme feral weather for the opportunity. Others were just in it for the weather, and willing to work on Earth to get it. Mary Mae fell into the latter camp. She relished in the challenge, the chance to fight a new and different kind of storm that had never been touched by the hooves of ponies. She wanted to land with aching wings, soaked to the bone from driving rain. She wanted to feel rime ice in her forelock and be tossed around by cloud winds. But exploring new foods was an unfortunate consequence of being on Earth. They'd learned that pet stores sold alfalfa cubes and farm supply stores sold mineral blocks. At restaurants, she ordered what was as close to a proper pony food as she could get and was often disappointed. Fish was skinned and filleted, and sometimes breaded and deep fried, and no pony had pastured grasses on the menu. Not until now, anyway. Regardless of the clover supposedly in it, the shake was an artificial green. She wouldn't have expected anything less. She overheard some of the humans say that McDonald's sold fake plastic food, and couldn't agree more. Plastic food served in plastic cups and plastic-coated paper wrappers. But what really mattered was the taste. She sniffed at it and could smell lots of things, none of them clover. Maybe the whipped cream had been a mistake. Maybe it was covering up the sweet grassy smell of shamrocks. She jammed the straw into the drink and leaned over it. The first taste was whipped cream, if it could be called that. The picture on the menu of the shake with whipped cream had enticed her even though she should have known by now that food pictures lied. Behind that, what should have been clover was instead mint and a host of artificial flavors assaulting her senses. It made it all the worse, because she wasn't expecting it. Yet, she'd anticipated some fakeness to a McCafe shake, but not a blatant lie about what flavor it actually was. There was no grassiness whatsoever to her alleged shamrock shake. Mary Mae was a dutiful pony, so she took a second sip just to be sure. Maybe the unexpectedness of the mint had covered the clover. But no. There was no clover to be found in the shake. Some ponies on the team would have taken it as a learning experience, unwilling to ruffle feathers. Others might have liked the flavor, even if it had been unexpected. Mint was good for digestion, after all. Mary Mae was not some ponies. The store had advertised a shamrock shake, and that was what she ordered. And that was not what she was given. She picked it up and marched to the front counter, where she had to wait in line behind a couple of county employees on their lunch break. They were fast, they had a usual order, and then stepped to the side to let her approach. This isn't what I ordered. She plopped the plastic cup on the counter. This is terrible! It's all mint, and there isn't any shamrock in it at all! 
The guy at the counter was taken aback. True, he hadn't seen Mary May in the restaurant before, but he'd seen some of the other ponies and they were polite and undemanding. He hadn't expected for one of them to be upset with the food that she had been served. Uh, n no, they don't have shamrocks. He didn't even know for sure what a shamrock was. That's just a name. It's a mint-flavored shake. I should have expected that. Mary May grumbled. Since your filet of fish isn't a proper fish either, but it is a fish, isn't it? He nodded. 100% Alaska Pollock from Sustainable Alaskan Fisheries. She'd give him the benefit of the doubt on that. It could have started as a Pollock. I don't want mint. I want shamrocks. Clover. Why is this not clover? <laughs> because humans don't eat clover? He was wise enough to not say that. Let me get the manager. If there was to be a refund, which was likely in this case, it would be the manager who had to approve it anyway. I don't want a manager. I want a proper shamrock shake or I want my bits back. Hold on. He scurried away, and a moment later, a manager appeared, even though Mary May didn't want one. What seems to be the problem, uh, miss? I ordered a shamrock shake, and this hasn't got shamrock in it. Uh, no, our shamrock- I know! Mary May let out a dramatic sigh and pushed the offending shake a few inches closer to the kitchen. Now I know. We can make Yes, ma'am. She punched a few buttons on the screen, and the cash drawer popped open. Here you go. And since she was feeling magnanimous, and she was adorable, even if she was angry, Here's a $5 gift card towards anything on the menu. A $5 gift card didn't fix the deep offense Mary May felt towards McDonald's and their lying menu. A lightning strike would go a long way, but she wasn't supposed to do that. Likewise, tearing out the electrical wires that fed the building would get her in trouble. Not only with the human authorities and her handlers, but also with the other Pegasi and her team, some of which who actually enjoyed a few of the items on the McMenu. Even the filet of fish Instead, she took flight as soon as she was out the door, peppering the McDonald's with a few more choice insults as she flew south along the U.S. highway that bisected the town. Maybe she couldn't get her clover milkshake like she wanted, but she could have the next best thing, a flower smoothie. She landed in front of an unassuming beige metal building on the corner of Pine Street, the Flower Patch. They didn't make flower smoothies there, or even served food in the human sense of the word, but the ladies there were nice, friendly, and they had some tasty flowers. They would give her a deal on flowers that weren't nice enough to put in bouquets. Some hotels had conference rooms where they could set up their headquarters. Others didn't. The days in fell into the latter category, and so the team had purchased an extra two rooms with an adjoining door, set up some tables, and used it as an all-purpose room. Besides the equipment packs, laptop computers, and a bank of coffee makers in the kitchenette, it also had the team's blender. Mary May wasn't the only pony who loved smoothies, blended finer than any and all of Equestria. There was almost always at least some pony or person hanging out in the room, if they weren't on the road somewhere. Today, there was only one other pony in the room, Paradise, who was snoozing in the Papa San. Rocky Storm had discovered it at a crate and barrel, which didn't sell crates or barrels, and fallen in love with it. It was really comfy, almost as good as a cloud. Mary May went right into the kitchen and started blending her smoothie, pouring it into a tall glass once it was wholly homogenized. Then she sat down at one of the tables to enjoy her snack. She was halfway done when Dewdrop came in, a brown paper mix sack held in his mouth. He sat across from her, set it on the table, and pulled out a shamrock shake. Hey, have you tried one of these yet? They're tasty. I remember recently, I went to a McDonald's ordering a shamrock shake, and I wanted them to not add whipped cream, thinking, oh yeah, they'll put in more shamrock shake stuff in it. I don't know what was going on in my head, man. <laughs> Anywho, let's get on to our smart donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, 630 Battle, so I follow all the other things through Ryan and Iron Sky. Metaphor Nine Chuck Tiff, Dark Side Raiden, Normal Black Moon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Soldier Brother Mortar, Army Cone Library, Inside 9852, Will Crystal Mickey Rice, Soul Shadow Moon, Louis JDA, Chance of Crust, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat JGF, Murder Princess, JD1101, Caladus, Little Mighty, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.